Good morning, dear family, friends, brothers and sisters. I would like to welcome you all this morning to this special occasion. We are going to perform a baptism today. And uh, we will come together, rise up, and we will sing hymn number 222. And sing hymn number 222. I gave my life for thee. Over the side, 
because they're performing funeral, but they're also performing a resurrection immediately. You all know that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, and after three days, he was risen. Today, we are not going to wait three days, it's going to be three seconds. Candidate for the baptism that are here, candidates for the baptism that are here, they will be emerged into the water and immediately uh, uh, taken out, which represents the resurrection of a new man in Jesus Christ. This is symbolic, but this is what baptism represents. Baptism is to be done in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is what makes it Christian baptism. It is through his ordinance that a person is admitted into the into it is through this ordinance that a person is admitted into the fellowship of the church. Christian baptism illustrates in dramatic style the death burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. At the same time, it also will say our death to sin and the new life in Christ. As the sinner conf conf confesses the Lord Jesus, he dies to sin and it is a raise to a brand new life. Being submerged in the water represents death to sin and emerging from the water represents the cleanse Holy life that follows. Very simple, baptism is an outward testimony of the inward change in believers' life. So I'm not here to give sermon, I'm not here to talk long, but just to to to, to show you a few words what baptism represents. And uh, it represents death of the old man, death to sin, and resurrection of a new man in Jesus Christ. So this is basically what is represented. And now I would like to invite you to kneel down with me together and we will offer a prayer. Our Father, which are in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we come before the throne of grace. And we thank you, Lord, for many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for Jesus, our dear Savior, who died on the cross of Calvary for our sins. And we thank you for this provision that uh, you have provided for us, that we, by uh, being baptized, we may accept new life in Jesus Christ, and that we may be saved from the sin. We ask you to be with us now, to bless us and to help us, to help us your Holy Spirit to be with us, to lead us and guide us. Special blessing I ask now for these uh, uh, candidates of baptism, be with them and give them strength and uh, be their guidance from now on and help them that they may, as they now uh, are going to experience uh, new life in Jesus Christ, that they may walk in a new life and that they, that they may uh, be always with you, and that you may give their guidance in their stead. We ask you to bless the people around the world, to bless our children, our youth, and the that they are facing daily. Help us that we may act as your children in every aspect of our life, that we may be a better Christian, that we may be a light to the world, that we may uh, be uh, channels through which thy blessing may reach those that are in need. In the name of Jesus, we pray and thank you. Amen. 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 I would like to ask our congregation to stand up and uh, the Walter and the candidates will go very into the pool.
Dear Sister Caitlin, according to your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear Brother Robert, according to your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Brother Joe, according to your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
sisters, <coughs> dear friends, welcome to this special occasion. Dear brothers and dear sisters who have been just baptized, I'm very happy, very happy right now. I know that heaven's happy. Well, I shared with you all, brethren, a scripture, a very short reading from Acts chapter 8. Soon after Jesus' death and resurrection, there was a deacon by the name Philip in Jerusalem church. And he was a faithful man, and God used him. Actually, the Holy Spirit came upon him, took him, and transported him far away. There was a man visiting Jerusalem at that time. He was an Ethiopian high court official in his chariot with a procession. And Philip joined them, and he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. Actually, the man was reading the Bible. And he didn't understand, and Philip explained to him. And then the man said, he on his own, I should be baptized. And I will read it from verse 36. And as they were on their way, they came unto certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. This is the gospel. Believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Savior. And what happened? And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, as we did. Both Philip and the eunuch. And he baptized him. And what is coming now next is very interesting, very beautiful. And when they were come up out of water, out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. That the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Now the Holy Spirit will not take me away, but I am happy in the Spirit. I feel the Spirit's presence. And the eunuch was not surprised. See, he somehow understood something supernatural is taking place. But what was interesting, he was rejoicing. <coughs> I remember the day when I was baptized many years ago, and I was very happy. And I'm happy for you today. I'm happy for the family today. And I believe that heaven is rejoicing. Thank God for the decision you have made. You believe in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And in that faith, you went into watery grave and came back to life. New life. And you and we all should be happy and rejoicing. I take this opportunity to thank the Toronto Yugoslavian Seminary Church for allowing us this space to use it, and to all of you who have come here. We will continue the service at our church, where we're present, but at this time we will have a special music, and we will ask the family members to sing it.
At this moment, let us open the hymnals. And hymn number 474, Bright Reviews of Father's Mercy, 474. <laughs>
you the Lord for this uh, wonderful hymn. On this occasion, I'd like to address the newly baptized members. Today, it's a big joy, not only in our hearts and in the families from which some of you, you have family members here. And if you don't have close family members, I want to assure you, you still have family members which are your brothers and sisters. So this brings us even closer to uh, our Heavenly Father when you know that somebody is there for you. And we have witnessed today this covenant with the Lord which you have uh, made through the Baptist. So it's a celebration, it's joy here and joy in heaven. This is a wonderful moment when people can open a new page in their lives and they can start from the beginning and they can say, from now on, I am a servant of the Lord. From now on, I am a son and a daughter of God. Well, I always mention in this kind of speeches and when you address those who have been newly baptized, I always mention this uh, example of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know his first encounter after he was baptized almost 2,000 years ago? His first meeting, do you know, after baptism with whom he went to meet? Well, you might think, well, probably it was with his father. That would have been a wonderful idea, right? But I'd like to, uh, I'd like to read just one verse here in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 1. So, this is Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 1. Two verses prior to chapter 4, we can read about his baptism. When he came down to Jordan and John the Baptist, he was baptizing. And Christ came, came to be baptized by John. And you know that in the beginning, he kind of like refused. He said, I am not worthy. But then he said, you have to do it. I have to go to this baptism. I have to give him an example. So, after he was baptized, we read the, the account what this, uh, uh, what, what is written here in Matthew, it says, then was, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So his first meeting after he was baptized was not with God. His first meeting was not with the angels or with the heavenly host or with nothing like that. His first meeting after being baptized was with whom? With the devil. So we see that the Bible says, well, he was taken into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So what does that mean? Well, we, we should not think, you know, that after we are baptized, everything is going to be, you know, smooth. There is not going to be any temptations. Well, the things have changed around. And now, if before we might have chastened, you know, and go after sin, now Satan is even more after us. But the most important thing you have to remember is that Christ didn't go by himself. The Bible says that he was led, right? So he didn't go by himself. He would say, well, now once I'm being baptized, I think I want to meet Satan. No, that was not his thought. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So I, I want to address specifically to you that... When you let the Holy Spirit live your life, even if the Holy Spirit decides to take you and meet with the devil or with the demons, doesn't matter how many they might be, that's fine. Even if this is according to what the Holy Spirit wants to take you and lead you. 
This is very important. Look, if you decide on your own, well, I'm going to go and meet with the devil and I'm going to tell him I'm going to code the Bible, I want to assure you, the devil can code the Bible even better than you and me can do. But if you will let the Holy Spirit from this day on lead your life and guide your life. You remember in the days of the Apostles, when did they receive the Holy Spirit? The Bible says in the book of Acts that first they were baptized and then the Holy Spirit came upon those who have been baptized. Now my wish for you today is that today you receive the portion. You receive the comforter. You receive the power and this divine spirit which is an assurance wherever he takes you. You can be assured. You will be victorious. Did Christ come victorious out of those temptations in the wilderness? Yes, he did. You know what was the secret? Because he was led by the Spirit. If he was on his own, we don't know the outcome. But because he was led by the Spirit. Now, Apostle Paul writes in, in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. It's a good encouragement for all of us. This is Epistle to Philippians, chapter 3, verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have other handed, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. So this is very important. Whatsoever your life has been before, that's behind. Now we are looking forward to reach new heights, to reach to those things what Christ has prepared and walk in those works which He has prepared for us. In um, uh, also Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians, I'd like just to read a couple of verses. 2 Corinthians 5.20 Paul says, now then when we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. So did you know that from now on, we are ambassadors? I, I guess you all know what means an ambassador. An ambassador is someone who represents his government, into a foreign country or nation. That's an ambassador. You know that an ambassador has a, you know, has a, has, has a code how to dress, has a different manners how he should behave. He has to be careful what he says because he represents another government. He's an ambassador. And Apostle Paul says, now you are ambassadors for who? For me. Now, Brother Rob, Brother Joe, Sister Kate, you are ambassadors. Such a privilege. You know, people probably, some of them, they dream and they want and they go to study to become ambassadors, to become consuls, representatives, diplomats, if you wish. But now and today, you become ambassadors and not for a specific country in this world, not for Canada. Not for any other country. You become ambassadors for Christ. Isn't this a privilege? Isn't this something what we are called to, to represent His kingdom? This is my wish and my desire and my sincere prayer for all of you. That from this day on, you truly represent the Lord Jesus Christ until He comes again. And then He's going to say, Rob. Joe, Caitlin, come here closer. Good and faithful servants. May God bless you. And remember that He is with you. And let His Holy Spirit to guide you as you live from this place today. Amen. Amen. In continuation, Pastor Walter Lukic will uh, continue with the program.
we will also have another special musical item, and I invite those who will be here to come forward to present it. Oh, Jesus, I'd like to read briefly from 
from the book of Acts, this model church, how it operated and what it tells us. Now verse 41, chapter 2, verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. So we did it. But what follows? And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So they added to the existing brethren or believers. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. See what baptism leads you to? This is what it leads you to. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. Brethren, I believe that this ideal should be restored in the church, remnant church. I believe that we should have this koinonia, how they call it in Greek, this fellowship, this unity. We belong to the same body. We belong to the same body. We should have that unity. And by being baptized, you are joining the body of believers. And it's a great joy for all of us. Brother Martinkovic is not exactly the same category, I have to say it clearly. I spoke today with my mother back in Croatia, and I mentioned what is going place, taking place here today. And she told me, I'm very glad for Brother Yosa, how we call you. And she said, I remember those days. He was always a good boy, and he loved the Lord. But Brother Joe was very young when he was Baptist, and he didn't understand everything at that young age. And he said, I want you to be my covenant. And I'm glad that you did it today. Because I know that you have deep conviction, deep love for the truth and for the Lord. And this is very good. And here we have representatives, a young generation coming from our church. We have a long-standing member of our church who is experiencing deeper commitment. And we have a person who is coming completely outside of the church, Ross. And you see how the Holy Spirit works. I'm so glad that we can be in this. And I pray that God will help you to grow and be, be being built in this building that Jesus is building. And I'd like to finish with this text from 1 Peter 2. Which we read the Lord in also selected the same text we thinking alike. 1 Peter 2, verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that he may grow thereby. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. And then he says, look, after tasting this graciousness of the Lord and bringing of that milk and being, you know, to whom? To Jesus coming as unto a living stone. He is allowed indeed of men but chosen of God and precious. People rejected Jesus Christ, but God chose him, and he is the living stone. What we have to do after being baptized, what we do, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So you see, this is what we do. We are being built in that structure. So there is a place for you, each one of you, to be built in that structure that God is building. We all have our place. And what is God's what is God's ideal? Look at this. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show for the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his mouth. Brethren, this is a privilege of all of us, but especially of you who have joined the church, to be built and to be represented. This is what the Dorian said, we are ambassadors. We represent the kingdom of God here on earth. So may you be worthy representatives. God's name is called upon you. You are his chosen treasure possession. May this day remain etched in your memory forever. May you remember this vow you made or renewed as long as you live. We will be with you. We will help you and support you. And you, Caitlin, as you will be traveling far away tomorrow, may God be with you and help you and use you, your talents and skills, and that you can bring blessing to others. It's a good example of our young people. I'm glad in this church, young people are making these choices. And new people are joining. After all, we have another brother here. That's a great joy.
And there are others waiting in line, I'm sure, who are just, you know, God willing, will make that step as well. And Brother Joe is a good example to all of us how we need to be rededicated and to be recommitted to the Lord as we prepare for the soon coming of the Lord. May God be with you and bless you. May He bless us all. Amen. We have another special music. So at this time, we would like to fellowship you into the church, the Toronto Church, and the Seventh-day Adventist Reform Movement. So Caitlin, you are first to be baptized, and I will extend to you the right hand of church fellowship. From this day on, you are the member of this church, and member of the family of God on earth. May God bless you, may he guide you, and may he enter the pearly gates for you in heaven the city. This is my vision prayer. So I will hand to you the certificate of baptism, and you will receive something else in a moment. So uh, allow me just to finish, and then uh, Brother Martinkovic, you are a member of this church, but I just wish to reconfirm that you are even to a higher degree a member now. And I believe that in heaven this day has been recorded and that you will have a deeper experience in spiritual things and that God will be with you as long as you live until we enter into heaven the city. May God be with you and your family. It's my mission prayer. It's my great privilege and joy to experience this today. And this is also a certificate acknowledging that you have been uh, in your camera today. Rob, please come forward. Yes. Rob, God be with you. I extend to you the right hand of church fellowship. From this day on, you are a member of this church, Toronto Church, and a member of the family of God on earth. May God be with you and guide you as he has guided you so far, so wonderfully, giving you victories. May you experience new victories, and may you enter into the holy city. Is my vision prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Walter. God be with you, and this is the certificate of 
Thank you for the baptism. Got the video, you can just stay here and the Victorian can congratulate. Uh, Caitlin, I'm glad that you made this step. It was a great privilege to have some studies with you. And I hope that you will be a good example for your siblings and for the other youth in this church. May God bless you and be a good example. Amen. And bless you. Brother John, may the Lord bless you today in this important decision to renew your covenant. I wish you God's blessings and the Holy Spirit to guide you. Thank you. Brother Rob, yes. it is good to see you today with a smiling face and making this step forward to make the covenant of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I am joyful and may the Lord bless you that you would be a good example for other uh, friends you have and for your family uh, far and near. God yeah. bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hey, so cute. Today, today, honey, you are the most beautiful flower in our family. <clears throat> today, you are, you are sunshine in our family, and not only in our family, but also in church family. So may God be with you, bless you, and I will be church family. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, help you with the uh, going and uh, keep you safe. And uh, I know uh, your parents are worried. I know what they're going through. I went through this, and I'm sure this is the happy day in their life. It will help you. Brother Dietrich. I do will help you and guide you very much. Now, your brother already with us, but uh, this is a new covenant again with renewal, and the uh, middle keep you and help you. Uh, Rob, please come. Yes. Stay on. Yes. May the Lord bless you and uh, enjoy with the new fellowship, with the new church, with the new members, new friends that you have in this church. May, may he, uh, the Lord help you and guide you in your life. Yes. Thank you. Thank Amen. You. You just stay here, we have some presents for you, and uh, here are the ladies who will, sisters who will hand it to you. Tanya, you would like to hand first to... When I came to Canada first time, Kate was just one year old, and look at her now. She is a big girl, and she is an official member of our Toronto Church. May God bless you, Kate, and all the decisions you made, and my, may God bless you, she you want to tell that. And you come back even more strength in this job. It's a present here for you. It's a much sure that you can do that. And I hope so. Brother <laughs> John, I wish you all the best and may God help you. Uh, now when you are renewing your house with him, this is for you. And Brother Rob, this is for you. May God bless you. Thank you. These Thank are the you. books you can read, inspirational yes. books. Uh, so, you may take a seat at this time. Everybody can take a seat. Thank you. And we will have another special music. And I ask the brother who can prepare, I think it's a choir or something like that, to sing at this time.
just happy to for their stay to load the trucks with the books and stuff. They know we are not um, creatures and stuff. We don't have those quality. So what we could do, we'll do it physically. You know, and, and somehow it didn't work out. So I think it was my fault, and I ask God for forgiveness and uh, help me like whatever time is left for me to be to redeem the time, you know, and, and do my best and do actually what he wanted me to do. So I'm glad for that. Thank you. Thank God. You know, I had a bad conscience because you have requested at least the baptism, I mean baptism for a long time and we somehow weather conditions, but I'm glad we did it. We did it today. Thank God. Brethren, I thank you all for being here, helping with this special program. I want to encourage all those who desire to be baptized, to renew the covenant, whatever, do not delay, do not hesitate. Yesterday, after the sermon, several people approached me and requested visitation and preparation for <coughs> baptism. I'm so happy. We should speak. We should encourage people. No delay. No delay. Awake, be baptized, is the call from the Lord. Believe, be baptized. This is what the Lord wants, and this is a good way. I'm glad you did it, and I encourage all those who are hesitating or who are thinking, don't delay. The church is open, the church is willing to receive you. Brethren, this time, we will close the service with a hymn number 599. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus.
of the peace. But if the peace happens, we know where to go. It always has to be better the foot of the cross. It's a safe place. But the Holy Spirit will be with us. And may the Holy Spirit be with you as we leave this place. I thank you so much for coming here. That you respect and honor this gay brethren. And that we joyfully together unite our voices in songs of praise and prayer. And may God be with us as we leave this place. Thank all those again who have helped with this program. And uh, we will at this time ask the newly baptized members to be at the door.
decibels. May the Lord help you to grow and not get stressed. I I'm <laughs> 